In this video, I'm going to tackle a high voltage inverter used to drive a piece of neon tubing. So this inverter will step the 12 volts input up to about 1500 volts to fire a piece of neon tube. It's used in a clock. It's broken before. I know what the problem is going in. Let's fix it. Okay, what I have here is one of the first uh, neon clocks that I built. Um, many many years ago this is just a piece of neon tubing it's supposed to glow bright blue it's glowing very very dim because the inverter has failed again now this is one that I've repaired before it's, it uses a 12 volt to um, it's, it's probably 1500 volts or so this is typically a cold cathode fluorescent it's not a full-on uh, neon tube so to speak because neon tubes are always red and they're filled with neon gas and they need a much higher voltage to, to uh, ignite the gas um, typically cold cathode fluorescents operate 1000 to 1500 volts and um, the inverter anyway has gone bad so I'm going to show you how to fix one of these little inverters okay this is the inverter to this unit here and it's been glued down with hot snot so I basically have to get the inverter off of here in order to uh, work on it. So let me just grab something to cut the hot snot away. This is the inverter that is in this unit here. I have to be really careful because th these are the glass neon tubes here. So I don't want to break them because if I break that neon, this thing is shot. Uh, basically this clock started out its life with an analog clock. I actually bought this thing It, it had an, a quartz analog clock in it and um, It was uh, The the uh, quartz movement was no good. Uh, I bought the unit at a garage sale. It didn't work when I got it so uh, it basically it ran off of a battery and you plugged the wall wart into the into the wall and what I did with it is I modified it and put a digital clock, which is one that I built. This is a, an old kit, one of the first kits. I actually probably built a large format, um, probably 20, at least 20 odd years ago, with all individual um, uh, diodes, and it's based on the LM8560 single chip solution. So this was a, a kit that was sold, it's called a UniKit. This was a kit that was sold years ago, and you got a bag of parts and put it together. It runs with a little transformer. So this is the transformer here that powers up the clock, and here's the old wall wart that I just glued down to the, the chassis, and I've put, a, I've put a switch on it so that I can turn the, the light on and off if so desired. And what I gotta do is I gotta have to repair this inverter and there's only a couple capacitors on here it's it's going to typically probably be this one here this 10 microfarad 250 volt is probably the one that has gone bad but you can see what happened to this inverter board one time when it failed it uh, well it burned up pretty good so I had to repair it traces and stuff broke on it anyway I'm sure this is probably the cap that's bad 10 microfarad at 250 volts. We can certainly verify that with the ESR meter and verify that the ESR has in fact gone up on this thing. Find my ESR meter. We'll test that. So ESR meter is cal or is, uh, is uh, been zeroed out here. And I'll just test the the 10 microfarad. 250 volt, I believe this is it here. And as you can see, it's 16. And this other one over here is point, point 0.06. So this other one's okay. It's, it's going to be this one here is the one that's bad. This other one's a 220 at uh, 50 volts. It's, it's going to be this one here that's gone bad on it. And I just know that because it's been changed. Uh, probably twice and what happens when it goes bad is the display just starts to flicker and then it overheats and gets real hot so 
Let me go find a replacement. I didn't think I was even going to have a tan at 250, but I do. So let's just uh, remove the other one. As you can see, I've just bridged wires over it because it's the, the, the traces are, are pretty much shot on this thing. Here's the old one out. Again, I can test it out of circuit with the ESR meter, but it's going to be bad. It's always this one that goes bad. It's a no brainer. There's basically only two. Oh, yeah, it's completely open. See if I put the meter on here now and I test it. It's completely open, this one. Here's the new one. New one measures 1.8, and this one here is gone completely open. So we know that that's the problem. Uh, I knew that that was the problem going in because, as I say, this one's been changed. Um, this is probably the third time that it's changed. It lasts a long time, right? But the, the when I got it, it was bad, and uh. I changed it and it was good for this thing runs 24 hours a day I never shut it off it just sits over my TV in the in my media room so this is always running anyway pay attention to the polarity and we'll get the new component installed Kind of like that. For that matter, I can just solder this other leg right over to here, the ground. And now we can test this thing before I put it together. Now it's nice and bright. So now I'm just going to get my hot glue gun going again here and we'll tack down this power supply once again. And then I can put the cover on it and protect the tube from getting damaged and put it back in service. I'm not putting too much of this stuff down because, uh, you know, sure as hell at some point in time I'm going to have to take it apart again when that cap once again goes bad and, well, we know that it will. It's just a matter of time before it, it happens again. There we go. It's uh, fixed again. Yeah, from that angle, the numbers look a little uneven. It's just the way that the lights are shining through. But if I lower the camera down and you were to look at it square on, the brightness for the numbers is 
pretty uniform. So that's uh, how to fix one of these neon inverters that's used in a lot of these uh, neon beer signs and stuff that run on 12 or, or 15 or 18 volts AC or DC. This one here runs on, I believe it's 12 volts AC because the full wave bridge is actually on the board. Some of them work on DC, some of them work on AC. Some of them will work, work both ways. We'll go with either an AC or a DC transformer. Anyway, that's uh, how to fix these little inverters. As I say, they're not the most reliable thing in the world, but they're really quite simple to fix. Generally, just one capacitor. And it's usually the 10 microfarad 250. And they all, all these designs are very, very similar. So if you have one that's not putting out voltage and the tube and stuff is dim and flickering, check that uh, filter cap.